for joining. Remember to hit that thumbs up button below. Your support really makes a difference. It helps us reach more people. We can also benefit from the messages shared. We hope you enjoy. Hello and welcome to Real Relationship Talk, the podcast hosted by yours truly, Teresa Young, Relationship Master Coach, where we have open, non-judgmental, heart-to-heart conversations about love, self-love, self-care, dating and relationships. And for this week's episode to kick off season six, I am being joined by the absolutely amazing Dr. Charlene Shah Carlberg stewart Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. (laughs) I'm so excited for you to be here because I'm a huge fan of your work. So it's an absolute honour and privilege to be having a conversation with you today. So what I'm going to do, Dr. Shah, I'm just going to share with the audience a bit more about who you are and what you do. So Dr. Shah is a beacon of transformation and empowerment, infuses poetry into the fabric of life's journey. For over three decades devoted to ignited literacy among educators and leaders, she champions possibilities for every student. In addition to her impactful work in education, Dr. Shah is a talented poet and author. Her book, Resign and Shine, is a journal of redirection, reinvention and renewal capturing her two-week resignation experience and exploring the transformative power behind changing one's life. She dedicates herself to empowering women through the non-profit initiative Project Miridor, which operates under the inspiring motto, a clear view to the best you. Her commitment to education, empowerment and personal growth is evident in both her professional and creative pursuits. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful, Dr. Shah. And I would be so honoured and I know the listeners will be so keen to understand a little bit more about the key highlights that led you to doing all that you do today. Yeah, thank you. Um, And thank you for reading all that. It's so lovely. (laughs) (laughs) Um, um, Yeah, I think what I would want listeners to know is that the journey to get to where I am today was a lot of events happened and very poignant ones were very early on for me. Um, I was a very shy, timid, um, not didn't believe in my, like my own abilities because I came from a dysfunctional home life. I was a child of an alcoholic and you go one of two ways, you know, you fight back or you just kind of freeze. (laughs) And I was a freezer. And so when I went to school for the first time, I was that child that didn't really speak. And I didn't know the basic things that a lot of kids knew. I remember kindergarten the first day when they were saying, do you know how to spell your name? Do you know your address? Do you know these colors? (laughs) Yeah, I got nothing. And I sort of carried that with me. And I remember very, um, very succinctly in my mind, I was going into first grade and they were doing spelling tests and they asked us to spell the word why. And I had no idea how to even begin to spell the word. And so I began life sort of as an underdog of sorts, but there was something inside of me that just kept pushing me to just keep trying, but like silently. So I remember one time there was an episode happening at the house and I was hiding in the closet and I was like, is this really life? <laughs> like, is this it? And I imagined even then as a really young child, a different life for me, like what it could, what could it be? What else, how, how would it feel like to be peaceful and harmony and, and feel love? And, and I just always imagine that inside, you know? So I just worked really, really hard. And it was through years of different forms of abuse and different things that I was like, I'm going to be a teacher. I'm going to help other kids because no one's going to come to school and not learn how to read on my dime. <laughs> so, mm. um, so I became an educator and just, it just sort of evolved from knowing that I put other people first to knowing that at some point in my life, I had to start to focus on me. And the moment that that happened was watching my father pass. It was very um, traumatic And from like diagnosis to death was two weeks. And it was just a really, really horrible time in my life. And I just knew then that reflection was important. And so that began the journey of I'm going to love the world and people as much as I can. And I'm also going to remember that I I need love too and care for myself. 
you know? And so that just spiraled into, you know, using my knowledge to get my doctorate and to really support schools and teachers and leaders grow literacy for their students and do, do what's best for kids. And along that way, you know, I just started using poetry as a way to express what was going on internally. And in the middle of a very tumultuous divorce, I found a box of books that I had written a long time ago in two poems. One was entitled Sweet Love, which is to my children. And the other was entitled Invisible Me. And I thought, even so many years ago, I didn't see me, you know, and now I do. And, and so um, I got to a space once again in my life where I wasn't being valued and I'm, and my work wasn't being honored the way that it should have been. And so long story short, I submitted a resignation letter. And during my two week resignation, I just felt so compelled to write down what I was feeling each and every day and thoughts that would come to my mind and books and different people's advice that came to me. And so that's, that's where Resign and Shine came. And, you know, every day is a new adventure and it's exciting and scary and fun all at the same time. So I hope it inspires others. Absolutely. And most recently, my copy has come <laughs> and I really can't wait to tuck into it. Mm -hmm. And it just sounds like such a powerful journal that you've got here, Rise, Resign and Shine. And we're going to delve more into Resign and Shine. When you were talking there, oh my goodness, I felt so moved because that's the first time I've actually heard your journey and mm. I completely relate to it. I too was the child of a dysfunctional family. My father was alcohol and drug dependent too. So there was mm. domestic violence and I was the eldest of four children and very shy at school and, and poetry was my vessel absolutely my vessel too in order to move forward and express my thoughts and my feelings actually acrostic poems was one of my favorite poems to write so your story really resonates with me and it's really moved me really moved me listening to it and I thought how ironic that the word that you couldn't write was why why is such an important <laughs> motivator for a journey isn't it like how ironic is that that it was why that you couldn't spell but yet now you tapped into your why for your experience and you are now navigating your journey with a purpose that's amazing thank you for that I didn't even realize it <laughs> it is so true it is full circle that I sat there just so defeated and then yeah. know, knowing your why is probably the most important thing um, in anything at personal professional yeah it's you need to know your why. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's talk more, maybe, you know, about your why and moving you into Resign and Shine. Were there any key pivotal moments actually during that two week period that really inspired your journey? You know, what were some of the, the key learnings there? Yeah. So it was interesting because. I had asked for a change in the way my role was going to be in the company. And it was a, it, it was a resounding yes. Mm. And then it became a no. And in that moment, I was, you know, of course, upset at first, like, what, you know, this can't be happening. I don't understand. And then I said to myself, it's something my girlfriend and I talk about a lot for everything that you say no to you're you actually get to say yes to something else and it's in the yes to something else that it here lies the power yeah. you know and I thought, well i'm gonna do this i've set myself up i didn't do something crazy like i have things i want to do differently in my life and i want to change um the way i live and how i live and what i do each day and who gets to decide my time i want it to be me and I'm going to do it now, you know, and it was the soft little kick from the universe that helped me go, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to say goodbye. And during the two weeks, of course, you know, two week resignation is great. You're still getting a paycheck at the end of the two. So that feels good. Yeah. And you have time to really explore, but I remember um, people's shocked faces. Like, but what are you doing? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna do a little of this, a little bit of that. And it's going to start to <laughs> You know, like yeah. I'm writing a journal, like writing a journal. <laughs> yeah. And and I think it was as I was writing, 
I was remembering statements that I would write down. I just have this this uh, list of things I call them wings of wisdom because every time I got on a plane for work, <laughs> like a statement that would come to my head. And it was, and I was revisiting those like, oh my gosh, that's what today is. Today's that statement, today's a statement. So it just started to come, come back to me. And, um, and I think it was, as you said, what's my why right now? And it yeah. evolved each and every day. It got a little bit more refined and it's still getting refined. I feel like the road that leads you to this bridge for transformation is so beautiful and can be so long and so short. It's just different for all of us. And yet the transformation is really where the beauty comes in because you're mm -hmm. in charge of you and you're the only person who can change your life. And once you're really aware of that, then you just, okay, you know, got to go. Yep. Yeah, I'm angry right now. Why am I angry right now? Let me talk about that. I'm really happy. Why is that? <laughs> and, yeah. and, and owning those, owning every emotion, every, everything that you do and saying it's going to be hard. And it, it is, there's days that are challenging um, more than others. Um, but I know that I'm on the road of where I'm supposed to be right now. And it just yeah. feels so, feels so good. Yeah. And I can see that you're beaming when you're speaking about this journey and this road <laughs> that you are on right now. And what you have spoken about there is change. Mm -hmm. That can be very daunting. You know, depending upon what that change is like, whether it's something that is initiated, sometimes it's forced, it's put upon us. So during this period of change, of course, saying so somebody's rejection was a redirection, perhaps, you know, to something bigger and better for you. Were there any fears or resistance that was coming up for you during this time? Because I think that impacts a lot of people when it comes to change. Yeah. And and like you said, you know, is the change, did you decide the change? Yeah. Then you really got to own it. <laughs> like, All right, girl, you, you picked this. Now, what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, and sometimes you get forced into change and it, it's just, a, it goes against what you expected in your life. And Either way, it's hard. I think what's most important for change, especially if you get to decide it, mm -hmm. is to really own what it is that you want to have different in your life. So if you're looking to change your career, then own what it is that you think will be very different. Mm -hmm. Part of, I think, the most important thing people have to do is decide, like, what does something feel like, look like? be for you and can you see it and if you can't see it then it's not defined enough for you you're not really aware of what you're working towards mm -hmm. you know so I feel like when things came up it, that were were struggles for me were you know okay so you're not going to get this consistent paycheck every other week so what 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 are you going to lean into you know and so I got to lean into I also have my um, license as a realtor and I do that and you know, I, I now I'm consulting for school districts for myself and for my company with my best friend called Mirador. And Mirador is this beautiful version of how do we educate and inspire teachers and leaders to do what's best for children, you know? And so we coach around the need of the person, like, where's your... Vygotsky calls it the zone of proximal development, which is like the sweet spot. Like, so how do I help someone be aware of their sweet spot of where they are right now and then nudge them forward to get to even better? And so each day as I'm going through this redirection and renewal and um, reinvention of myself, I'm asking myself, where are you right now? Where's what's your, what's your zone of proximal development and what's the nudge that you need? Maybe the nudge I need is to reach out to someone who's doing what I want to do. And so I would do that. I'd call my friend and be like, all right, how's your consulting company going? And what are you doing differently? And talk to me. Or I call another friend or I Google, like, what's the best way to attract customers? What, you know, just whatever it is, I had to like own that part because now I'm my own boss. So I get to decide what that is. And so we have to lean into other experts because we're just, we're not in this journey alone. The journey we have to decide is the what it is that we're going to do, our why. Then we got to reach out and grow ourselves and figure out what that looks like. Who do I, do I need to lean into a person, an idea? A thing? Do I just need to go take a walk on the water? <laughs> I'm not on the water. Walk near the water. Yeah. And clear my mind, you know. So mm -hmm. I think that's 
it's powerful when you start to really have that really keen awareness of where you're at in the moment sometimes and in the day and then you know knowing where you want to get to in the end is important yeah so the journey is to be witnessed and enjoyed and to surround yourself with a supportive network too that you can draw upon during these moments when change can feel a little bit scary for a lot yeah. of people so you know who can you draw upon what expertise and also intuition because I imagine that a lot of your decisions or this your decision in this moment was guided by an intuitive pull and drawn and sometimes people say but how do I know if it's logic or if it's intuition? Do you have a viewpoint on that? Oh my gosh. I think our intuition is literally one of the most important things you can tap into for yourself. When you get that feeling or that idea or that pause, when you pause, that's your intuition saying, well, do you really want to do this? Yes. <laughs> this really good you know and you got to listen every time I've listened I was happy and every time I didn't listen I learned a little lesson <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like you know when something is right it feels right mm. it's it's not always easy sometimes it can be hard but it's there's nothing going you you're not saying to yourself no, I don't think I should do that. You're saying, ooh, this might be hard, but I know it's what I'm going to do. Like, oh, I might be a little tired today, but I know I got to get up and do this, you know? Yeah. I might be a little fearful, but if we live in fear and we live in worry and we live in, in these negative sort of spaces because of we're not sure, then you're going to block your blessings. You're going to block your path forward. So you have to recognize and say, you know, this is a little bit of a scary thing I'm trying to do. It's going to be really hard. It's going to be difficult, but I can do it. And if you believe you can, you will, you know, and you just got to keep believing. And it's, you know, that's a song, I think, but it's, 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 it is. <laughs> don't stop believing. Um, you just, you know, you've got to, you've got to believe in that. And so your intuition is your guide. It's that, it's that inner voice that's going, yeah, you, you're good. Or no, no, no don't not that person they're not they're not the right person for you right now you know and so mm -hmm. and I look at everyone as someone I can learn from even if my intuition says I probably need to keep you at an arm's length I can learn because you know everyone I tell my children this all the time everyone can serve as an example and or a non-example of who you would like to be or not be like, you know, and I said, even me as your mom, sometimes I'm sure I've been a really wonderful example and sometimes probably not so much. So don't take the not so much. Don't take the non-example, take the example. And, and that's how I try to like, when I meet anyone, just take that with me. Yeah. And that tapping into your intuition is so powerful, as you said, and it's that feeling like really, now how do you feel about that? So even if it feels good and then your logical mind is saying, yeah, but yeah yeah are, are you sure that you got that critic or you got that that self-doubt creeping in just think are you sure and it can be scary and I've made some big decisions based upon intuition and just like you it has paid off in, in the end no it, it has paid off at that time it was super scary it really was but equally when I followed my intuition I was like yeah it's your it's your I tell you your internal gps system like your sat nav what we would say here like it just really guides you to make those decisions that can be scary, but trust it. It's there for a reason. It is. Yeah. And when you question ahead. yourself, sorry, when you question yourself, you made me think like, yeah, you might question, go, ooh, I don't know. This is scary. Should I do it? Go back to the why you did it in the first place or why you're starting it, because that's going to be your guide and go, oh, yeah, that's right. That's the reason I did this because this I'm not having this anymore. So I'm doing this. So I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'm good exactly. And I always love to say, and your why will make you fly because it's the the motivation, the drive. Yes, when it's those days and you think, oh, what's going on? And I don't have that motivation. Bring it back to the why, because the why can actually help you to to build up your resilience. I would say mm -hmm. just to keep going and keep going. Was there anything else? Because through your own personal journey, I know that so many people are going to learn from this experience too. So during your, your two-week resignation period as well, 
what else were you doing in order to build up your resilience? Because you spoke about support networks and was there self-care practices or those type of things? Yes. Oh my gosh, so much. So I really tuned into being sure that I took care of my body, my mind, and my spirit every day. I was very um, religious about it. So when I wake up, I gave thanks. Um, I read a, a piece of scripture or a part of a journal and, and gave thanks for, for what I, for the day. And, and then I would do other self-care things like, you know, walk and yoga and those types of things to keep, to keep the good endorphins flowing. Because when you're in a space of redirection and big change in your life, if you allow like negative to seep in too long, or you let your mind go there too long, you will just get stuck. So I was very adamant about those things. Um, I keep, I've done vision boards in the past, but I have a vision stack. And so my vision stack is cards and the cards begin with like a picture or a word, like for your year in your life. So what I told myself this year is last year, my year was a word was allowing, and I was going to allow people to be who they are and me just mm -hmm. to flow into my life and my work to flow. And this year, my word was patience. And so I would wake up and be like, how can you be more patient today? Because work is coming, but some of it might not be here yet. And so it's coming. You don't know how, you just know it is going to happen. So, so I would read my cards as I needed to, and I would refine them. I get a little bit more specific or that sort of thing. Um, the other thing I did was I worked towards what new knowledge I needed to have or experience I needed to have to, to help me be even better as, um, as a consultant for education. And so I would take courses or, you know, read blogs or read um, articles and um, research for, around reading and literacy and all that kind of stuff. So I did a lot of like, what work am I going to do to be better? And I, I've been working on this concept around instructional practice. I call it the trifecta of um, really empowering classrooms. And so I, I would work on those things too, just always knowing like these things are going to matter someday for someone. And I'm just going to, going to work on that. And then, um, when I needed to, you know, I would lean into prayer and meditation. I would lean into a friend if I needed to, but I also would lead into the silence and the peace to just give my myself space to honor what I decided to do and honor where I was and then decide what, what do you think you need to do next? You know, mm -hmm. and that next means tomorrow because you want to keep each day kind of going. So that's that's really um, the things that I did to help me through. And some days, you know, I needed to cry. Mm -hmm. You know, there's loss and there's grief and you have to go through that. And, and other days I laughed a whole lot. And I, it just let yourself feel what you're feeling. Don't stay stuck in one space too long because the beauty of emotions is they're fluid. And so recognize why you have a tear and is there something you can do about it? Then you do it. And if there isn't, you just need to give yourself space to cry a little bit, then you cry, you know? Um, and if you need to laugh, then you find your favorite comedian and watch a little TikTok of them or YouTube yeah. And, yeah. and laugh. Yeah. And just, yeah, just take care of you is, is I think, the most important thing. It can be challenging because everyone has different, you know, phases and stages of life that they're in and other people. But the more you take that time to really, like you said, What's the things you need to do each day to to support your mind, support your body, and support your spirit is going to be important to whatever you do and whoever you're with. Mm. Such a powerful share there when you're talking. And I thought, would you describe that as your sweet spot? What, what's your oh. sweet spot? Yeah, the sweet spot that you were speaking to when you're speaking about the mirador, I think, you know, was it the word that you use? Yeah, so we try to find the sweet spot of in coaching. So yeah. when I go to a school or a district and I observe and we talk and we listen, I, I start to lean into, okay, where's the sweet spot that they need to be working in? You know, do they yeah. do we need to focus more on instructional practice? Do we need to focus more on do we understand the curriculum? You know, where where are we going? And then when we find the sweet spot, it's like it's when someone's really ready to receive more knowledge and more practice yeah. and more skill. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Because I was wondering if, if you could align that because I know that Oprah Winfrey has spoken about finding a sweet spot before. And I thought, oh, I wonder if like 
you could describe that, what you were describing in terms of the self-care practices, the pause, the silence. Because some people might say, oh, that, that feels like my sweet spot. Like, that's a nice place to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I think, you know, for me, it's it's in the refinement of my vision work of my life. And in my prayer meditation, I'm refining my practices there. But if someone is brand new to the work, you know, their sweet spot is get it, just get it started. Yeah. Write your first card. What's your word? Pick your word today. And then tomorrow, pick an image that matches the word. And so just kind of tapping into where you are. And if it's if it's taking care of your body through exercise or eating right, just one one moment in the day, do something physical that you enjoy doing. Don't like force yourself to do stuff that's really hard that you're not going to keep doing. But if you like yeah. to walk, walk a block, then walk two, then walk five. Just yeah. get out there. <laughs> you know, find, find where you are. If you're a marathon runner, well, then you're going to be going for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Plan that into your day. And I think if we ask each ourselves some really powerful questions, so for example, you know, what do I need to feel today? Or, you know, what do I need to do? What do I, what do I want to have? You know, who do I need to be today? Because a lot of what you, I think, are speaking to is like that identity piece as well. Like, who do we have to be? Who are we now? Who yeah. do we have to become, perhaps, in order to bring in those manifestations and to be connected with our why? Have you done any intentional identity work at all to really find yourself in that Ooh. space? I'm not sure if this story matches what you're asking. So you have to tell okay. me. Sure. So I remember a few years ago, it's probably six now, maybe six years ago. And I was having a conversation with someone and they were like, Shar, you can do more with this world. You should have your doctorate. And in my mind, my critic was like, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dr. Shaw has a ring to me, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, by the way. <laughs> you, are, you are not smart enough to do that. Mm -hmm. And then I left that conversation and it was just twirling around in my head. And I thought, you know what, maybe I'll just look into a couple programs and see what the heck, you know, I'm single mom, three teenagers. I can, I can certainly just look. So I looked and in my search, I found this school that was giving away a scholarship and you could get full, full scholarship for your doctorate, but you had to write an essay of 700 words or less as to why you deserved this doctorate for free, basically. And I was like, oh, I can totally do that. Like there has been this pervasive achievement gap for students and it is unacceptable and, you know, it's wrong. And I'm seeing it across the nation now. And I know that it's outside of the United States as well. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote this essay that I was so proud of. I worked on it every day because I only had a week to finish it because I was late to finding out about it. And I remember being at the airport and I read it the one last time. And I was like, okay, I am so thankful for this opportunity to earn this scholarship. And if I get it, it's going to be amazing. And I can't wait to tell my family, my friends, and just everybody. And I sent off the letter and I had to wait 30 days. And on the 30th day, I was chatting with my girlfriend and I was like, oh, I guess I, I guess it wasn't for me. And it's okay. Like I felt peace with it because I gave thanks for the opportunity mm -hmm. and I wasn't sure how I was going to pay for this doctorate and take care of my three kids. But I just knew like the giving thanks every day and imagining it, it just felt like it was still real, even though I wasn't sure I had a yes or a no yet. You know what I mean? But it felt like a no. Then my phone dings and it's a voicemail and it's the dean from the university congratulating me for winning the full scholarship. So of course I'm screaming and jumping around in the hotel room. And it was in that moment that I remembered being that little girl hiding in the closet going, mm, I can imagine a life of peace and happiness and love and being a good mom. And, and I remembered that mantra in my mind was something that I actually did for the scholarship. And it took hard work and it took action on my part to write this essay, to research, to really be sure to give the strong message as to why I deserved it, you know, and I was so grateful to get it. And, you know, the hard work, the four years of it was it's intense. I mean, it's really intense, but, you know, I, and I, and I got to do a study around, you know, a district trying to close the achievement gap for, mm -hmm. um, for black and brown students and they did it with this curriculum and it didn't work 
you know, and it's like another message to say, well, what do we need to do differently as a system so that this doesn't continue to, to go on, you know? And yeah. so that's why I continue the work because, you know, I remember being that child that just wasn't a reader yet and was embarrassed and afraid to read out loud because I didn't know all the words and that sort of thing. And I just don't want any, any other children to ever feel that way. So I feel like that experience was one that allowed me to, you know, not just be only believe in myself, but believe in the power behind taking action and then feeling it, <laughs> like seeing it, yeah. feeling it. That's pretty cool. A lot of our manifestations and our goals, our dreams, and our desires, ambitions are driven by feeding. We are in a feeding-based universe, an energetic feeding-based universe. So the fact that you were able to tap into that feeling is absolutely amazing. And not only that, you were able to believe and do something outside of yourself because there was that sense of purpose. It's like, I do not want another child, for example, to experience what I experienced too. And that's so powerful because we are wired to connect with people as human beings so when we can give back and it's not that's like what's in it for me it's like what's in it for other people as well what's in it for them that's such a powerful way to move um your concept your self-concept i would say to something else and what you also shared there which i absolutely loved dr Shah, was gratitude the power of gratitude and thanking for something that you expected to happen so thank you because it's that expectation behind it without being attached to the outcome of course but it's like the power of gratitude I have to say is is worked wonders for me it works wonders for people who I know use it very intentionally as well to actually be thankful for the situation that you experience so is that something as well that you touch upon because I know that part of your book is about self-discovery so and it does revolve some reflective questions within the book so tell me a little bit more about the the questions, some of the reflective questions that you have in your books. I know that listeners would love to know what they're in, what's in store for them. Oh my gosh, yeah. So, so the setup of the book is to share like the impetus of what got me to resign. So just yeah. a little backstory. And then each day is sort of titled with how I was feeling for the day. And then I write like the experience of the day, which it's amazing what happens in two weeks. Like I, it's unbelievable yeah. how much went on. And then at the close of the day, I would write reflection questions. Mm. So, so that even if you're not resigning, I'm not suggesting that everyone do that. What I'm suggesting is if you feel like you're in that space of redirecting your life, or if you feel like I, I just, I, I've got to reinvent who I am, or I just need to be renewed. Like, like I feel like if you answer these questions, you'll, you'll get there. Now I don't have a memory off the top of my head, but for example, um, for day one, I know. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. I'm just waiting for my book for those in audio. We're just um, looking through the book right now. Yeah. So like the first reflection question is, is my compelling reason for resigning in harmony with my core values? So it really makes you think about, you know, insert redirection is the reason I want to redirect my life. Does it, does it honor who I am as a human being? You know, uh, Dr. Brene Brown reminds us to find out what are your core values? And that's really who you are in like personal and leadership. And so for me, like care and love is how I approach life and people. So when I said to my, asked myself this question, I was like, Am I showing myself self-care by doing this? Am I being loving to myself and my family and, and my life and who I work for and don't work for anymore? Am I being, is this in a loving space? And it was. So I was like, okay, you know, I can, I can do this, you know? So lean into those types of things. Um, and then the other one is, you know, is my decision to resign a bold step forward in my life or is it impulsive? And I think, again, insert redirection yeah. and remove resign and think, you know, am I leaving this relationship because I just don't want to put in the work or am I leaving because I've done the work and this is no longer a space that I need to be in. Yeah. So don't, I'm not asking anyone to be impulsive. And I really wanted to make that clear because we shouldn't be impulsive in life. I, I always tell um, my children and anyone if you're feeling a heightened state of emotion, super, super happy, super, super sad, make zero decisions 
because they're probably not the right one because they're not based in a space where you're thinking with everything that you need to be thinking about, not just this heightened state of emotion. So I think that's really important for people to lean into. And then they end the day with, you know, a bonus statement that, you know, is kind yes. of fun. So I feel like um, I've gotten some really lovely feedback from people, men and women who just said, oh, this part really resonated with me or um, thank you. I, I never knew something like this about you, or this is just really cool to think about. And so it's, it's, it's kind of fun. It's like if one person um, does something different that supports their life to go in a more positive direction, like, yay. <laughs> Absolutely. And the bonus statements, how did you come up with those? Yeah. So the bonus statements are interesting. So I, my brain is always, you know, going like everyone's and yeah. some like statements just pop in my head about, you know, life and different things, you know? And so as I was writing the day, a statement would come to my head, like, Oh, this is a really good bonus for this day. Like you should remember this. And so that's what, that's what I, they just came from me just, you know, in traveling and different things. Some, some I had written before and I just found them in my list of wings of wisdom and then others just came to me in that moment, but they're just a part of me that I'm all, I'm all I love one liners that just go. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love, so the bonus statements, cause I haven't, I'm just going to keep you no know, pl shamelessly plug in the book. So, yeah. are the bonus statements? Could you use them as a form of affirmation at all? Is that the kind of statements that come out of them? You could, you could. So, like, um, I love this one. This was from day. This is from day six. Um, but one of this bonus statement is live, live by design, and save default for your printer settings. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I think it's like. Someone really, you need to embrace that, right? Like I'm oh, going to yeah. live by design. So that means all areas of my life I get to design. And I could let it just default to whatever comes my way and whatever happens. But then it's, you know, then you're just sort of living in that victim space and you're not really owning what's happening. Yeah. It's like, oh, of course, this or that, you know. So no, so design it, you know, and design it well. Yeah, <laughs> and well be beautiful about it because you can change it at any time <laughs> yeah I love that and when you were speaking I was like design feel well what you said there was so empowering I think that statement in itself and I thought okay so design means like you're in that growth mindset but whereas default is a fixed mindset it's like there's just nothing that I can do about it you no know, woe me and you've got the the victim mentality and you've got the victor mentality and I just thought you know wow that is such I would use that as an affirmation, Dr. Shah, in myself. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you. really, you know, am I going to be living by default? Am I going to be living by, you know, design? Am I going to survive or am I going to thrive? There's just so much around that. I absolutely love bonus statements as well. Yeah. And uh, within the book, I'm so curious. I know I've got my own copy, but I'm asking all of the questions that I did. That it's journaling form, so you can write in the book as well and free flow your thoughts. Is that correct? Yeah, I didn't give a whole lot of space because I thought people can answer one, none or all, you know, and you can go back and forth with it. It was just like, here's this day and this moment of time that I experienced and other things that might come to help you. So like in my book, I have spaces where I, I say pause like a pro. And I learned that from this book about the power of time. And it says we all have to pause like pros and take a step back and so in my book the pauses are around to go listen to a song or to go look at this theory of success or you know just go somewhere else that I don't have rights to share with you and read read that listen to it and then see how that re see why that resonated with me this day you know um one of them one of the pause like a prose is around the poem by Portia Nelson I don't know if you're familiar with that it's the, the chapters, yeah it's like the chapters of my life I don't want to kill the poem <laughs> but it basically goes she gets five index cards to write her life on and she can only have enough space on each card and you know step one is like I walk down the road I see a hole I fall in it you know it's chapter one and then chapter two is I walk down the same road I see the hole I fall in it it doesn't take me as long to get out, but I get out. The first the first day you can't get out, you're in there for a long time. 
third, you know, third chapter is you walk down the road, see the hole, <laughs> you decide to, you know, you fall in it, but you get out fast because you know it. And then chapter four is like, I walk down the same road, I see the hole, I walk around it. And the last chapter is I walk down another road. <laughs> so, no, it's so, so powerful. It's it is so powerful and that is probably the second time in three weeks I've had that reference so I'm beginning to wonder if it's a little bit of a sign for me <laughs> to do that I so why like, those holes <laughs> yeah, I'm going, where are those holes let me tell you <laughs> where are those holes <laughs> I absolutely like, love that share that you said there this so much I believe that the listeners will gain from reading this book because as you said if you apply in context because it's not always going to refer to somebody resigning from their job but as you said it could be a relationship thing it could be um, a health thing to explore and particularly when you spoke about the value that value piece work is so important when it comes to understanding because when you know your values then you can understand what your needs are too and you can align the needs to the values so I just cannot wait to actually you know, speak more about this and I will share it. And out of interest, where can the listeners get this copy of their journal from? Yeah, thank you for that. So it's on Amazon. Um, it's, you know, $14.99 for US dollars. I'm not sure what um, what our listeners in other spaces would have to pay, but it's not very expensive. Yeah. Um, and it was written, you know, completely from my heart and completely hope that people enjoy it and if they don't that's okay too you can tell me <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely fine I just think that this is going to be such a great guide it's such a great guide and I have to say and and it's not a, a lengthy journal at all you know design design it's not something that is going to take you a long time to read at all and it's got nice bold big print too which I absolutely <laughs> Love. I need that. I need that. Yeah. And any books, any, any books that I reference in the book, there's a list of references in the back. So if you, people want to read more about a certain idea or thought, you know, they have, they know where to go to get it, which I think is important too, because it's yeah. just really a culmination of so much learning. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, so happy that we had an opportunity to explore more about your book, Dr. Shah. And, you know, as we said before, she's an author, so there's other you know, publications as well that you might want to explore, just as I have too. So you can find her. You spoke about relationships, actually, and I just wondered, um, in terms of your own personal experience, what have been some of the key learnings on a romantic front that you've had from those experiences? Oh, my gosh, yeah. Romance and learning is so united. Um, I think... I've learned a, a few things. One is that love should never hurt. And I know that people go, yeah, of course, Char, love shouldn't hurt. It, right. And also, not just physical. I think lots of times people think it's, oh, a hurt is like a physical touch. And it's, it's so, can be so much more than that. Mm -hmm. So, Love is something that shouldn't cause you any sort of, you know, emotional trauma, spiritual trauma, financial, physical trauma. Like, remember that, because I have experienced that, and it's very difficult to get out from. It's, it's a survivorship that people who've been in it know, and you never know who that could be. One in four of us has, has been in, in some sort of abusive relationship, mm -hmm. and so... I think it's really important for people to remember that like if it hurts it's probably not the space you need to be in and talk to someone tell someone get help um, because it's very difficult to get out so I, I think that's important I think another thing people should think about is that you know you can love someone and it's not the right time place or circumstance for your lives to be together yeah. and it's okay to still love them and it's okay to not be together and be peaceful and walk away because it, it, loving someone sometimes can be the easy part is love it's the hard part is like are we the best together for each other in this time split place and circumstance and sometimes the answer to that is no you know and it doesn't mean the love is gone or it's less it's just it wasn't the right right space you know and then I think the other thing about love is 
if you know and are very aware of you as a person, you can really love someone else so much deeper. And so when you're in a romantic space with someone, really be sure that you're aware of what, what brings you joy, what, mm-hmm. what it is that you want and need in a relationship. And for instance, when you're not feeling good, what, how could that person give you an extend and show you love? How does that person need to feel loved in that moment when you're tired and cranky and hungry? You know, like, what are the things that you need from this person? Because that's that's what matters to you, you know? So I think the self-care part of the work that you share with your audiences and what I've put in my book and just what I do for myself every day is, is like the most important thing because the most important relationship you have on this ground right now is with yourself. And so when you are in love with yourself and know yourself then you really can give so much more love to other people and it's ever evolving you know it's ever it's ever evolving and I remember leaving a relationship once and not even knowing like do I know what kind of eggs I really like and what what show would I really watch and you know and we just start discovering yourself you're like well that's cool I like this and I like that and this is my favorite and you know you can you can get lost you can get lost in love and I think that um, love should just should honor you as a human being and yeah. if you uh, if you honor you then someone else can honor you too and mm-hmm. you can honor that and that's yeah. that's the reciprocity of and the beauty of it <laughs> yes so beautifully expressed there because I absolutely would agree with you you know one of the or the most important relationship you can have with yourself on earth (laughs) on the ground as you said is that relationship you have with yourself and even when you are in a relationship it's still having that self-love and that relationship with yourself knowing yourself loving yourself trusting yourself appreciating yourself honoring yourself and what does that look like for you because it's going to look so different for each individual my self-care practices may be completely different to your um, Dr. Shah so again and another person listening to this but it's tapping into that feeling of you know, what is it that I actually need who am I you know what who am I outside of even being the mom the partner the employee the entrepreneur whatever other hat you may be having you need to scale it back it's like you know, actually, I do. I do like to watch Netflix, and it's okay you know, to watch Netflix. And I will balance it with some personal development or whatever that is. It's really tapping into that. And as you were saying, love—it shouldn't be something that that like, causes you that hurts. With it's, it's, I would say, love is our essence. It's our core. We, we're born in love. Oh, you're going to hear me go into a rant now. <laughs> Make it the TV okay? show. <laughs> but, I love it. So, but no, it's actually a case of I can really concur with what you have shared. That I think is absolutely important and key learnings for people to take with them. So you know, you've spoken about love so beautifully, Dr. Shah. What is your personal definition of love when it comes to romantic context then? Oh wow. So I think, you know, the poet the poetry in me comes out. So I feel like love should be like the rise of the morning sun chiming in your ears every day because it's always there. And sometimes it's shining right before you and sometimes it's behind the scenes, but it's it's always there. And you don't worry whether the sun's gonna come up or not, it's coming, right? It's, it's just there. Um, and I think of like the cleanse of the morning dew on the grass, you know, that yes. it'll be a little wet and dirty sometimes Ooh. and get brushed off. And you can do that for each other. You know, it's kind of nice. And then, of course, that just leads you to, you know, planting these beautiful seeds and flowers that grow. And we know that sometimes they need watering, they need tending, and sometimes a leaf will fall off or two, but it can regrow and it can replant somewhere else. And and you can build this beautiful sea of flowers together, you know. And most importantly, it's it's gracious through time, through the good times, the bad times the sick mm-hmm. times, the happy times, the disagreement times, that there's just this beautiful grace that you share with this other person. And mm-hmm. then, and of course, we're getting close to Valentine's Day, so it's just a precious Valentine every day. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. 
I just had such a beautiful visual when you were saying that, just the sun and just kind of ties into resign and shine and you know that sunset, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that feeling, the sun rising. It's just, it just feels actually so warm. What you described there just felt so warm and so comforting. Just, oh, thank you for such an amazing visual there. Because I think that, that it's almost like taking somebody along a visualization process. <laughs> Yeah, in terms yeah. of what love and I think that that's a really good technique actually for those people who are thinking about what's my personal definition of love see how visual you can make that what is your love vision in terms of what it is exactly you would be seeing what would you be experiencing what would you be tasting that like, really tap into all of your senses when it comes to your personal definition of love, because what you shared there, I was actually really feeling it. I thought, oh yeah, I'm in that energy, <laughs> Dr. Shah, I'm in that energy. That's so absolutely amazing. I have absolutely enjoyed oh, this conversation with you. I just knew it was going to be in flow. I was moved. I was touched. I was like inspired by everything that you shared. And I know that the listeners are going to feel exactly the same way too. I would love, because I have a parting tradition on this show, is for you to leave the listeners with one key takeaway to help them along their journey of love life and relationships. Okay, I love that. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, I think it goes back to my statement about live your life by design and not by default, like save default for printer settings, because yeah. that is love. And, you know, I've had several conversations that come up most recently um, with family and, and with um, acquaintances around, around that. And my advice to them was know your mission. So when you say I'm on a mission, I want to be married. I'm, you know, I'll have um, younger ladies tell me I'm this age. I need to get married. I want to have children. And I say, okay, so tell me more. What is, what is that relationship? What does that marriage look like? You know, what does it sound like? How does he, he or she treat you? What, where do, how do they show you love? How are you honored? How are you valued? You know, and I make them, like you said, sort of visualize what it is and not to say I have to have this or, you know, sometimes it'll come to jobs too. Like people will say, oh, I have to go to work and do this. And I say, why? You know, and like, well, I have bills, I have this, I have that. Okay. So if that's the why and you don't want to leave because you have to pay these bills or do this or you feel like you have to stay, then then don't say you have to. Say, I get to. Because get to. we don't have, there's no have tos mm -hmm. in life. There are none. Oh, only the ones that you impose on yourself. I think as young children, our families have tos get imposed on us. And then we just do all those have tos. And then you go one day you wake up, hopefully sooner than me and go, you know, I don't really have to. I'm gonna because I want to. And I like that paycheck. And I like this. And I like that. So I'm gonna continue to do this job. And, you know, and don't say that you have to because you don't, you don't mm -hmm. have to do anything. You just have to decide yeah. your mission. So be very clear, be very clear and aware of what your mission is. So if it's just to find a person to marry, well, you'll do that. But you might lose out on some details that are really important for that relationship. <laughs> yeah, I, I absolutely. That's a beautiful key takeaway. And the power of why. I mean, I think, you know, along the, the theme, the underlying thing here was the why, isn't it? The why. I just love how the journey started with you in terms of not knowing how to spell why. And then suddenly you are living your why. And it's because of your mission. And I think that's so important. And then one of a lovely concept that I love is the five whys. So you ask yourself why five times to get down to that root cause of why, 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 why? <laughs> because when you get there, then that's your motivator to make you fly. So absolutely love that share Dr Shah it's been so wonderful having a conversation with you and for those who are listening those who are watching where are you hanging out where can they connect with you follow you reach out to you 
Oh, yeah. So, you know, I'm on most of the social medias, uh, Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn, um, TikTok I have, but I don't have a video or anything like that yet. <laughs> Work in progress. <laughs> yeah, they can, they can reach out to me there. In my book, there's links to um, websites. I, have, I do have a website called What Will You Do? And it really stems from conversations similar to this that I've had and given speeches around, you know, each chapter of our life, I feel like each decade sets us up for the next decade. So in each decade, you have to say, well, what will you do, you know, which is sort of the message of what's your mission, and then you decide what you'll do. And then that kind of sets you up for, you know, what's happening right now. And then so um, that's a that's a website where people can read my blogs and see my poetry and different things like that. So okay yeah. great well I am reaching a new decade myself in March I have to say I'm reaching my fourth floor so yeah. I, <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait I actually can't wait so I will definitely be logging on to that website just to get some more information around that thank you so much and I will be dropping some links into the show notes as well so that you'll be able to follow Dr Shah in some of those hot spaces where she said that she can be found again gratitude appreciation to you dr shah for such a wonderful conversation such an honor and privilege and i'm so happy that i've got my book as well <laughs> can't wait i know this is going to be a reread it's not going to gather any dust that's for sure thank and you <laughs> you're so welcome and for everybody who has listened to the show i want to thank you for your time for your attention and for your energy and until the next episode take care of yourself and others too